heaven, what it will be like. You need to know this. You need to know this. Heaven is waiting for you. God is waiting for you. Jesus is waiting for you. The Holy Spirit is waiting for you. And all of the angels in heaven are all waiting for you. One day you will walk into the gates of the city of heaven. Although we do not yet have the full understanding and revelation of the glory of heaven, we have information from different passages of the Bible about what heaven will look like. Heaven is God's dwelling place, and when we shall be with him, we will know better than we have known. From biblical understanding, heaven is not a place that is in abstraction. When we get to heaven, we shall all appreciate its tangibility, because the truth is that heaven is not a concept, heaven is not an idea, heaven is a real place. We are not going to turn into invisible spiritual beings, but we will become immortals. God will give us new bodies, glorified bodies. When God would destroy this old and corrupted heaven and earth, a new heaven and a new earth will proceed forth from him. Heaven is not just about hanging out on the clouds. At rapture, we would all be caught up to be with the Lord in the clouds where we would be celebrating with the Lord. In the skies, we would celebrate the marriage supper of the Lamb, but that is not our final abode. Jesus left a word of comfort and consolation for us in John 14 when he was rounding up his earthly ministry. He said, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Where else is the house of God other than heaven? Jesus stated explicitly that there are many mansions in his Father's house. Right now, Jesus is preparing a place for us in heaven so that we can be where he is. You are loved. You are loved with an everlasting love. Our great creator came on this earth and died for you. You and I deserve hell. God would have been completely justified to line us up all one by one and cast us into hell. But our God is not only a God of justice, he is a God of love. And when the conversation came up about the destiny of mankind, and when no one on earth could save mankind, and when no angel could save mankind, Jesus stepped forward and said, I'll go. Jesus was in heaven already. He didn't have to come for you and me. Not only did he bleed and die on the cross for you, but now he is waiting for you in heaven. Heaven is a city, the golden city of God. Heaven is such a great place that John described its streets as streets laden with gold. John described the city of heaven in Revelations 21, 18 through 19, which the following words, And the building of the wall of it was of jasper, and the city was pure gold, like unto clear glass. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. Heaven is the eternal home of believers, it is the perfect home of peace where our joy will rise into eternity. When we get to heaven, we shall not have the fear of anything because evil will be done away with. There, nothing will cause us to be afraid. Death does not exist in heaven. It is forever swallowed up in victory so that we can say, O oh death, where is your sting? O oh grave, where is your victory? You are not allowed here, death. You cannot cross this line, death. Aren't you tired of graveyards and funerals? Aren't you tired of losing loved ones? Aren't you tired of the unexpectancy of death? It just comes out of the blue. One minute they are here, the next minute they are gone. But not in heaven. Everything in heaven is there to stay. You won't find a graveyard in heaven. You won't find a funeral in heaven. You won't find tears in heaven. There are no goodbyes. You won't have to watch a family member fall sick, because sickness is not allowed there. It is forbidden. Entrance is forbidden. Nothing will ever corrupt the eternal bliss we will enjoy in heaven. 
there is nothing but life, real life in heaven. We only need to endure a little while more till we find ourselves in heaven. All the pains, toilings, sufferings, and persecutions we have endured on earth will all become things of the past, never to be remembered or experienced. You live this life, let's say, for 100 years at most, but heaven is forever. This 100 years will be nothing once you are in heaven. Heaven is a place where all believers will have a taste of newness. There is no wonderful sight on earth that can be comparable to the sight and experience which we will enjoy in heaven. At the fullness of time, when God will make all things new and Christ will return to take us to be with him, all former sorrows and pains will no longer be remembered. In heaven, there will be no sorrow. We will only shed tears of joy when we remember how God helped us to make it home. And more importantly, is the fact that the joy of heaven is not going to be momentary, but will spring into eternity. No evil or filthy or wicked thing or person will ever enter into the gates of heaven. It is better to experience all the Bible says about heaven than to just read or hear about it. Heaven is not a place to miss. No matter how well spoken a preacher is, he or she cannot give you the full scope of heaven. Therefore, you must determine to get there and see its beauty for yourself. Prepare to get to heaven by striving against every earthly thing that may want to get you entangled. Although we are in the world, we do not belong to the world. We are the citizens of heaven, and we have to go back to our country, the city of heaven. Already there is a joy in our hearts that defies the opposition and trials and challenges we are facing in this world. There is a pointer to the fact that this world is not our home. We are just passers-by. Heaven is a place that was prepared for you. Heaven is a place where all your dreams come true. Heaven is a place where you will be in eternal glory with all the holy angels. All you will be able to see as far as the eye can see, angel upon angel upon angel. Everything there will be eternal. Everything there will be beautiful. Everything there will be holy. Just close your eyes and imagine it. Look out as far as you can see and take it all in. Angels above you. Heavenly angels with eyes all over their wings. Take it in. Heaven is a place where our dear Redeemer, our Lord Jesus, will be. There will be no end to it. There will be no bottom to it. There will be no limit to it. You are now in eternity, forever and ever. This is the choice you have. Everything will be bright. Every day will be filled with new experiences of the eternal God. Finally, Revelations 21, 7 through 8 tells us that those who would be qualified to enter heaven and those who would not be qualified, it reads, He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. You know, when people are being cast into the lake of fire, you are going to say to yourself, Thank God I believe in Jesus Christ. Thank God I overcame. It is only the overcomers that will be qualified to enter heaven. Who are the overcomers? They are those who fight against sin and the pleasures of the world and win their victory. God will be proud to associate with them. If we must enter heaven, we must work against all sinful acts and abominable practices. Heaven is a holy place meant for holy people. James chapter 1, verse 13 through 14. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their evil desires and enticed. What this is saying is that you need to quit saying God sends people to hell. People are the ones sending themselves to hell. God made a way out for everyone and they decided not to follow the way. The way is Jesus. He came to earth to die for your sins and created a path that you can take out of hellfire. There is a way that seems right, but the end leads to destruction. If you hearken to the voice of God, 
you will never go the path of destruction. God wants to send you to heaven. He wants to be there with you. God loves you. And that was why Jesus died for us all. Don't allow people to paint the picture of God as if he is some cosmic dictator who sits on his throne waiting in anticipation to cast people into hell. If he is, then this whole world would have been destroyed. This is why in the book of Revelation, when the world is going through its final nosedive and the Antichrist has taken center stage of the world and he is introducing the mark of the beast into the world, God sends three angels. Literally, God sends three angels that will be seen in the upper atmosphere of earth. And these three angels will be telling everyone and preaching to everyone about the gospel. When the world is at its darkest hour, God will go to supernatural lengths to the point of sending angels in order for men and women to be saved and for them to spend eternity with him. Think of how much you want to go to heaven. The truth is God wants you to go to heaven more than you want to go for yourself. God wants you in heaven. He said it. He said that he wants to be your God. Revelations chapter 21 verse 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. God is waiting for you to come to him. He is waiting for you to come through Jesus. Heaven is a place waiting for you. God Almighty is waiting for you in heaven the day you finally see your maker. Matthew chapter 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. There are lots of things to worry about on earth, but the most important is the kingdom of God. We already have the kingdom of God in our midst. Jesus has brought this kingdom to us, and it is through it that we will get to heaven. We cannot just let this kingdom go away without allowing it in our lives. If you allow God in your life by accepting Christ, you will see the kingdom of heaven. Things to look forward to in heaven. I believe that we as Christians don't think enough about heaven. We don't talk much about heaven. We don't, and that's the truth. A lot of us don't have the correct view of heaven. We view heaven as that place we will go after we have had all the fun here on earth. And this view of heaven is incorrect. My friend, your best days on earth are not even a glimpse of what you will experience in heaven. Philippians 3.20-21 through 21, But our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control, will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. Heaven is a beautiful place. The description that has been given of that wonderful place called heaven reveals to us that heaven is more beautiful than we can ever imagine. Heaven is a place for those who love God. So I ask you today, do you love God? Do you obey God because if you love Him, you will obey Him? Do you go where He wants you to go? Or do you just decide to go your way? You need to examine your life and ask yourself whether or not you truly love God. Only you can answer this question. John 14, 15 If ye love me, keep my commandments. The things that God has kept in heaven is for those who love Him. We must not be deceiving ourselves. Those who will make it to heaven are those who love God. It is never too late to start showing your love for God. It is not too late to come back to your first love. It is not too late to retrace your steps back to God and love Him with all your heart. Because there is no time and the end is near. There are wonderful things kept for you in heaven that you will enjoy. There are blessings in heaven that you should be looking forward to. You should always look forward to making heaven. 
you should always look forward to getting to that glorious place, the land of the living. That is heaven. Do you know why heaven is called the land of the living? Do you know why? Because there is no death. There is no death in heaven. It is not allowed in heaven. How does that make you feel? No more goodbyes. No more tears. No more sorrows. No more caskets. No more funerals. No more graveyards. Imagine never ever again you will see a graveyard again. Why? Because death is not allowed through those pearly gates. Heaven is the land of the living. Jesus said, He that liveth and believeth in me shall never die. He will never see death. He will never taste death. He will never fear death, and death will never be able to touch him. Revelation 1.18 I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Heaven is your home. The Bible says there is no need for the sun. There is no need for the moon. Why? Because the glory of God did lighten it. Heaven is the land of the living. It is a land of glory and righteousness, holiness and peace. The glory of God. In heaven you will finally see God, the King of all kings, the one in whom all things consist of, the one who sits upon high and looks low, the one in whom, who made everything that was made, you will finally see him, God Almighty, the keeper of creation, God Almighty, the one who has everything under his control, God Almighty, the Ancient of Days, God Almighty, the Architect of the Universe, God Almighty, the one from everlasting to everlasting, God Almighty, the one who always was, the one who always is, and the one who will always be, God Almighty. The one Isaiah saw sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. In the land of the living, you will finally see God Almighty. The one who has always been there for you. You will finally get to see God. The God who you felt his presence whilst you were on earth. The God who protected you. I honestly believe when we are in heaven and we look back over our lives, everything will be revealed. We will be able to see the times God saved us from the bad situations. And we will be able to see all the times God blocked us from making bad decisions. We will be able to see the great gifts God gave us during this life that we currently take credit for and we will turn and look into the face of God and realize truly it was him it was him who was there all the time it was him who picked you up when you had no more strength it was him who gave you the ability to work to provide for your loved ones it was him who gave you every good gift you have in your life. In heaven, we will all see God. We will see his light shining on us, and there will be no darkness. In heaven, God will be our God, which means there will be no other God. He will be so close to us than ever. We all want to see God. We all want to praise God at his throne. We will get to do that in heaven. Do you want God to be your God? Do you want to be in the presence of God day and night, praising him with joy in the new heaven and new earth? Do you want the joy of the Lord to be yours forever? Then getting to heaven should be your priority in this life. Revelation 21, one through three. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, 
coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. There will be no sin there, no unclean thing in heaven. Sin cannot enter in. How wonderful it will be to be permanently separated from sin. Won't you be glad? Not to feel a sense of shame or guilt, never having to feel dirty again. Are you not tired of all the atrocities of men? Are you not tired of all the evil news that has been flying around? Sickness is an unclean thing. Murder is an unclean thing. Every form of wickedness is unclean. None of these should be in heaven. Won't you be glad when there is no more sin? The devil and his angels will not be in heaven. These days, you cannot even use the internet peacefully without seeing some sinful adverts showing the nakedness of people. You did not ask for this, but it just comes and pops up. And that is because of the unclean things that are in this world. You cannot walk on the street without seeing immoralities. In heaven, purity is what we will be seeing. Holiness will be our lifestyle. We will not be seeing any kind of unclean spirits. No anger, no shame, no envy, no doubt. Nothing bad will be there. Revelation 21, 26 through 27. The glory and honor of the nations will be brought into it. Nothing impure will ever enter it. Nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. God will not allow anything unclean to enter this clean, pure, and holy place. The holiness of God will abound and no evil will be found. Are you not looking forward to seeing this? Don't you want a place where you will have no reports of evil at all? Don't you look forward to getting to the place where you will be made pure? 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through to 53. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must be put on incorruption, and this mortal must be put on immortality. This passage in Scripture is talking about when our glorified Lord Jesus will return, and the saints in God, who are alive and those who are asleep, will meet Him, not on earth and not in heaven, but in the sky with our glorified bodies. The greatest fact about heaven is that it is real. However, we are going to consider other characteristics of heaven. The goal of our Christian race is not to inherit this world and have every good thing of life. The ultimate prize we will receive at the end of our Christian journey is the reward of eternal life in heaven. There is nothing we can own and boast of that is as glorious or eternal as making it to heaven in the end and reigning with God. Absolutely nothing. Daily as we go about living our lives, we should have our gaze fixed on that glorious plane and the joy we would experience when we finally meet him. We shouldn't be so focused on this world. It is transient a passing phase. This world is not our home. Heaven is our future eternal dwelling place. It is our final destination. This is why the Bible warns us to store our treasure in heaven. Matthew 6, 19 through 20. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Jesus uses the parable of talents to illustrate the reality of heaven. The response of the master to his faithful servant proved that heaven is real. Matthew 25, 21. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. 
Thou hast been faithful over a few things, I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of thy Lord. The faithful steward was to enter into the joy of his Lord. The joy of his Lord is a symbolism of heaven. Every faithful believer will therefore enter heaven. Let's consider the following facts about heaven. Four facts about heaven. Number one, it is a place of eternal joy and bliss. Revelation 21 verse 4 says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Heaven is a place of absolute joy. Imagine God wiping away your tears. That is what the Bible says, and it is not an exaggeration. There will be no weeping or sorrow or sickness or fear in heaven. Most fortunately, the joy of heaven is not momentary, it is eternal. Your happiest day on earth cannot be compared with the joy of heaven. It is a city where we will never grow old or lose our loved ones to death, as we do on earth. All the pleasures in this world combined cannot be compared to the joy of heaven. It is beyond our reasoning to think of a place where there is no sorrow or tears or heartbreak. We can only attempt to describe the joy of heaven. The experience will be really overwhelming. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 17 says, There is a weight of glory in heaven which cannot be compared to our light and momentary affliction on earth. Number two, it is a place of final victory over sin. Isaiah 35 verse 8 and 9 says, And an highway shall be there, and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those the wayfaring men, though fools shall not err therein. No lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. Heaven is a place of absolute holiness to God. There is nothing unclean that will enter into heaven. It is a destination for saints. In heaven, there will be nothing like being tempted to sin. The nature of sin is completely dealt with and the appetite of our flesh for sins is eternally disabled. Our thoughts, words and actions will be holy in heaven. Here on earth we are tempted and we strive against sin, but there in heaven our final victory over sin is granted. The streets of heaven are the highways of holiness, a place where only those that are redeemed by the blood of Jesus will walk through. Number three, it is a place of unequal rewards. This is a great truth about heaven. It is a place of unequal rewards. Even though all believers will go to heaven, they will not be rewarded the same way. We shall be rewarded according to the quality of our work of God on earth. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 10 says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. The judgment seat of Christ is exclusively for the judgment of believers' work, and we shall be rewarded according to our commitment to the things of God on earth. We shall be rewarded differently, because we did not serve God equally. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 13 to 15 Every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, 
and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. There are believers whose works shall be burnt with fire because they did not build with quality material. People could applaud you on earth, but if all you offered was eye service, your work will be burnt and you will get no reward for it. On the other hand, believers who tirelessly worked for God out of sincere heart will receive their crowns. Although all believers will go to heaven, our equal rewards will differentiate us. According to the measure of our work, we will receive different crowns in heaven. There are different crowns for various people according to the quality of their work and service in God's vineyard. The Bible highlighted five types of crowns for believers in heaven. Number one, the incorruptible crown. The incorruptible crown is for believers who dealt with flesh and brought it under control. 1 Corinthians 9 verse 24 and 25 Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize? So run that ye may obtain, and every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. Number two, the crown of righteousness. The crown of glory is for all believers that are earnestly waiting for his second coming and love. The crown of righteousness is obtained only by faith. Second Timothy 4 verse 8 Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Number three, the crown of life. The crown of life is prepared for believers who endured persecution for righteousness' sake. It is for people who went through persecutions, sufferings, and trials. Revelation 2 verse 10, it is a promise. Number 4, the crown of glory. It is the crown for people in the fivefold ministry. Apostles, pastors, teachers, prophets, evangelists, and every person watching over God's flock and feeding his sheep. It is for people who are passionate about the gospel and spreading it to every end of the earth. 1 Peter 5 verse 2 to 4 This crown, the Bible says, it does not fade away. Number 5. The crown of rejoicing It is for every believer, every saved person that believes in the death resurrection and ascension of Jesus Christ. 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 19 We won't become angels. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 51, we will be changed. Our corruptible body is going to put on an incorruptible body and our mortal shall put on immortality. We will have glorified bodies, glorified bodies which will be able to stand the glorious presence of our Heavenly Father and the dazzling light of our Lord Jesus. Indeed, we will no longer wear this body. I am sure we all are familiar with this saying. When someone we really loved and was such a kind person dies, we say, Heaven just received another angel. As much as this is harmless, and our attempt at romanticizing their death as a transition to a better place, it isn't scriptural. 